Okay, this video is going to be about polar form and solving problems involving polar form. Polar form is just another way of expressing uh, an equation or a graph. So here's a couple of examples. We usually use the letter Z, but sometimes you'll see the letter C in your problems. Z1 equals R1, R being the radius, cosine theta 1 plus I, and I because it's going to be an imaginary component there, sine theta 1. Now we've got a second equation, and that is, we're going to label that as Z2. Z2 equals R2 cosine theta 2 plus I sine theta 2. Okay, so let's back up a little bit and just talk about what does all this mean? Where does all this actually come from? Okay, so let's start with, we have some theta, which is the angle right here. If we draw a line down like this, the distance from the origin up to here, we're going to call that R for the radius. And then from there to there, that's going to be the X coordinate of that point, and this is going to be the Y coordinate. So let's take a look at what all this means. If we use the Pythagorean theorem, we get x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So I'm going to write that over here. Okay. If we look at the trig formulas, opposite over hypotenuse, remember from Sokotoa, that's the sine. So the sine of theta is opposite y over r. So we're going to write this, sine theta equals y over r. Same thing with the cosine. Adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine, so that's x over r. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. I forgot to put a theta in there. So these are the things we're going to use when we're talking about graphing a polar equation. A polar equation is just another form of the linear equations uh, or the rectangular coordinates that we've used in the past. So I'm going to do a little conversion here. If I multiply both sides of this by r, I'm going to get r sine theta equals y. And then if I do the same thing here, multiply by r, I get r cosine theta equals x. And then I have tan theta is y over x. So these are the kind of things we're talking about. We can easily convert from what's called polar form to rectangular form. Okay, so let's go back to what we were just talking about before, polar form. Now, one of the problems that we will deal with in polar form is when we want to multiply two complex numbers that are in polar form. So in other words, we want to multiply this whole entire thing here by this whole entire thing. So luckily, we've simplified it with a formula. And the formula says, I multiply the two r's together, I take the two thetas and add them, and the same thing with the thetas on the sine. So multiplying two numbers, I use this formula, and then dividing two numbers, I use this formula, which is r1 divided by r2, and then you subtract the two thetas. So let's do um, an example problem on that. Okay, so here's our example. We've got our two numbers. Instead of using z, we're using c. So here's the form, just like we were talking about before. The form is going to look like this, where you've got an r times a cosine plus an i sine. So here we go, cosine pi over 3 plus i sine of pi over 3. And then the second number has different numbers, 1 half and then a pi over 4 and a pi over 4. So let's go back to our formula, which says when I, when I want to solve this and multiply these two together, I'll just put this down here, C1 times C2 
I'm going to multiply the R1 and R2 together. So there's R1. I'll just make a little note here. That's R1. That's our R2. So let me bring this down a little bit. C1 times C2 equals 8 times 1 half, because that's R1 times R2. And then I'm going to say cosine, and now we're doing theta 1 plus theta 2. So remember, this is theta 1, and this down here is theta 2. So I'm going to add. I'm going to do cosine pi over 3 plus pi over 4. And then I'm going to put a bracket here so we can tell that's different from parentheses, plus I sine of the same thing, pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Yeah, find another room. Okay, <clears throat> so now we can do some simplifying. I'm just going to take this away since we've got everything written out. So, 8 times a half, we know that's equal to 4. And this is going to be cosine of pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Now we're going to have to do our adding using common denominators. I won't do the, the work for that, but that ends up being 7 pi over 12. Plus i sine of 7 pi over 12. Okay. So that is our answer, but we're still in polar form. Polar form being a number and then uh, the r and then a cosine plus an i sine. That's polar form. We want to get to rectangular form. So here's our rectangular form. It's some number a plus i times some other number. So how do we get from this form to rectangular form? Well, it's, it's easier than you, you might think, because all we have to do really is find out what the cosine of this is. Uh, sometimes we can look on the unit circle and find it, and sometimes we can't. In this case, we can't. Uh, and then we find the sine of that number, and we plug everything in. All right, so let's go ahead and <clears throat> we're going to multiply that out. Let's do 4 times. Now, how do I get cosine of 7 pi over 12? We're going to have to use our calculator. So if I hit the cosine button, and then I want to do 7. Uh, let's use the pi button, not 3.14, because we want to be accurate. There's a pi button over here. 7 pi divided by 12. <clears throat> okay, and my answer, make sure your calculator is in radians and not degrees. The answer in radians is negative 2 point, or negative 0.2588. Negative 0.25, I'm going to round it to 0.259. So I've got 0.259 plus i times, and I'm going to do the sine of that same thing. So clear that, sine, again we're going to do 7 second pi divided by 12, and this time I get 0.966. Okay, so remember our goal now is to get to this A plus BI form. So really all we have to do now is just multiply the distributed property, 4 times this, 4 times that. And so when I multiply that out, that's what I get. And that does match up with our A plus BI form. So this particular problem, that's how you would do it.